we have this idea that in order to trust, I must first fight and win against my fears. I must first master my fear so then I could live in trust. But it's the other way around. You have to, despite your fear, live in trust. And only then will fear lose its grasp over you. Welcome to today's video. Today I will share with you how to start living life free from fear. I will share with you how to start building trust in life, how to wake up to the illusory nature of doership, how to wake up to the fact that the seeming doer that we currently take ourselves to be is actually part of the moving picture. So this video will really help you cultivate that trust within you and live a life free from guilt, fear, pride, anxiety, and so forth. In it, I will be sharing with you some powerful conversations that I had with my clients from the School of Awakening, and I will share with you some personal life examples that allowed me to cultivate that faith, that trust, that understanding that life is taking care of life. So without further ado, here it goes. Enjoy. So what is it usually for you? Is it, is it more so emotional or is it just like thinkingness? It's a combination, but it's very emotional. So um, it'll be a feeling that floods my throat and my chest. Um, and it's a fear. Um, it's all, it can get to the point of paralyzing, feeling like I'm like a deer caught what in headlights. That, what, is a, uh, what is being threatened? What do you feel uh, like you're protecting? Well, um, I'm in a wonderful sales job, but I haven't made any sales and I don't, I, I, I may not keep the job. So I'm protecting base. My, what I'm protecting is my, my basic survival. Here, of course, when let's say a lot is on the line and it seems so difficult, you must look at this as like the Super Bowl of this practice. <laughs> you know, like if you can see this clearly in this sort of scenario or something that like you're so invested in personally, then the entire rest of the thing becomes so much simpler and easier, you know? So again, just to say, to say state this first and foremost, because you know, I know I usually do, but just to re reiterate it again and again, because we so easily get lost when it's difficult. We have this idea that like, it sh shouldn't be difficult. When it is difficult, we're like, I can't deal with the practice right now. I don't know how to do it. So it's like, let me just deal with this. But actually, again, when it is most difficult, it is the greatest opportunity. It is, you can say, your time to shine. So that is firstly where you could see that no matter what it means for you personally, look at it as an opportunity to like act, I mean, practice this surrender. Of course, it is so, uh, it just pulls you in and it, it makes you feel like you're going to lose something that is a lot is at stake. This itself, uh, look at it almost like the, the devil's temptation, <laughs> you know, and see through it o over overcome the, the perception of there's a lot at stake because it will keep you blinded. It will keep you stuck in the thought. It will keep you stuck in constant controlling everything. It will, it will make ease and peace impossible. So here, I, I, and it may be a crazy thing to say, but it's have the attitude that there is nothing to lose. Have the attitude that no matter what arises, and even if I am to go through whatever experience my mind is so resisting and hoping that it never, never happened, even if I am to go through that, I'll be okay. I'll find a way. And you always will. That's a fact. Like you always will find a way. But it's like, we just, because we're so avoidant of that, like mentally even resisting that, that's why we so stay, so, stay so stuck in these fears. We get, and we attribute it so much meaning that we attribute it so much significance that this thing cannot happen. This thing better not happen. And in doing so, we are fighting against life because life is the unknown. And that one possibility is one of the possibilities. As long as you are against life, you will deeply suffer and you will not be that effect effective in what you do. Because when you're not at ease, 
surely maybe in the beginning that fear and that worry may motivate you, but it is a very like poisonous fuel. It burns itself out and it leaves you exhausted. And it oftentimes doesn't actually lead to a positive result. And it will continue to just repattern the cycle. So the way to go about this is not like trying to just diminish this fear or fight this fear, but actually see right now you're being, there's a, a theme coming up for you that, oh, I have a lot to lose and everything's at stake. It's like, see through this facade. When you are okay with the unknown, then nothing can grip you in this way. You know, right now it can only hook into you because you are so resistant of a particular uh, uh, possibility. And then of course the emotions and the thoughts at that level are very hard to practice with and deal with because something has already hooked into you. So we're taking it a level deeper and just you're becoming space-like. You can't hook into space. I can only hook into your identity. <laughs> I can only hook into what you're trying to protect, but I can't hook, to, I can't hook into space. So these thoughts will try and then there's nothing to hook onto. You know? You, uh, so this is where it's also good to investigate, like, for whom does this mean so much? I know from the personal point of view, of course, none of us want to lose our job and we want to do well financially and this and that. And trust me, I come up against these problems myself, you know, and it, business has taught me a lot about this. Um, and just like now, like, like adult life, you know, and, and taking care of, now I fully take care of my parents as well. So it's like a lot is at stake always. A lot of things are at play. There's always a lot to lose. I feel like the older I get also, you know, and maybe you've experienced this like more and more at stake, but it's like, that shouldn't be a problem. That shouldn't be a conflict. That, that is an opportunity to practice this. That is an opportunity to become, to acknowledge greater and greater your freedom. And again, it will establish you so firmly in trust because you will start to see that when you start to let go of this um, fear and worry, when you are really living in the possibility that anything can happen and you're no, not so moved by that, when you're living in the trust that whatever happens, I'll be okay, it actually, you'll see that, again, life takes care of life. Like in that ease you will experience life a whole different way. And the, when the sales are meant to come in, they will come in. If maybe this month they, they don't, then there will always be something that you need to go through. You know, That way you just have this supreme trust in life that like, no matter what my experience goes through, it's exactly what I need to experience. So I can do no wrong. There can be no wrong. And I just need to follow, I just need to let my experience unfold to teach me all the lessons that I need to learn to let, help me let go everything I need to let go. Because ultimately it is not, I'm not living this life to just make these sales to, to protect for my personal survival. Uh, play this like game of transcendence, you know, allow like live for that greater um, freedom. So, and that way you'll always have the strength to do so. Is that making sense? Yes, I, I love what you say. I'm, I'm already feeling like a, a lift. I feel everything from my throat to my chest. And I, I feel a little bit, I feel lighter. Um, yes. When you're lighter, how much better work do you do? How much more receptive are you to solutions? How much, how much are you able to go through even this difficult period without suffering it deeply, you know? So that is, the, that is what I mean by always return to ease. When you are a somebody, there's always a lot at stake and always a lot to protect. And it will keep you immersed in just the story of my life. Whereas once you start to let go of the things being hooked into, which is your own amount of significance you're attributing to the, these scenarios, what should happen, what shouldn't happen, what will happen if I lose this? When you start letting these things go, then you're, you're literally like living as the open space of acceptance in which experience is unfolding. 
And again, here you will wake up to that experience takes care of experience. You are not the controller of your experience. You are one of the moving images in the entire moving image. And what you really are as what you're witnessing this is the space in which it is unfolding, the screen on which it is playing. Let go of these worries and this starts to reveal itself. When you stay focused in the worries, you stay blinded by the story of who I am. <laughs> okay. So yeah. in these times when it's difficult, don't try to fight thoughts with thoughts or feelings with feelings. Ask, what is it th that it is hooking into so deeply because of which it is so hard? And it will start to make it clear to you and let go of those resistances. Allow life to have, have this freedom that like, honestly, you, you, like you can keep this open dialogue with God, with life, with universe, whatever resonates with you, that just like do whatever you want with me. Take my life anywhere it needs to go for me to let go of all of this nonsense. <laughs> and then just ride that journey and be at ease. It's not easy for sure. And you will lose this clarity, but just try to return to it. That is the practice. I love that. I love it. Thank you. I've had those glimpses. And I think those glimpses of that uh, nothingness are going to, is going to just get bigger and bigger. I just need a little bit of uh, patience. Yeah, be very patient with yourself. And just ride the journey. That's, it's that simple. Let the journey unfold to its very end. <laughs> You know, the way that my life has unfolded in the past few years, ever since I came across even the beginner spiritual teachings, I've really always had to live on the edge. I feel like my future has always, since I came to this teaching, been so uncertain. And I think there's a reason for that. Because everything was so uncertain, always on the, on the knife's edge, I had to live in a great amount of trust. I had to have faith in life. And I'll give you an example of when I had just started this journey of wanting to find my passion. During that time, I left behind a secure job, just getting out of college, a secure career path, the typical way of what my life was going to unfold, like just like all of my friends. And I had no idea if I would ever find my passion. I didn't even know what I, what I was gonna do, let alone make a living out of it, actually like add value to other people's lives, do, do things I wanted to do. If I was ever going to be able to be successful in that, it is honestly such a blessing because only by really implementing and putting everything on the line, when you're willing to part ways with the old, the old belief system, just the status quo, just your idea of what's comfortable, what is you and what is not you. Only then does the unknown come into play in your life greater than ever. Only then do you really start to wake up to how uncertainty is where you wanna be. The unknown is life itself, as I always say. This built a deep trust in me in life. This started to dissolve the boundary between my doing and life's doing. My doing is life's doing. And the me is actually just illusory, just for the story's sake. It's actually just the play of manifestation. Anything you accumulate in life will always be threatened by uncertainty. And if you take ownership of this, of everything you do and everything you think and everything you everything that happens in your life, then you will always feel deeply insecure. You will always feel fearful, anxious, because you have a lot to protect. But this is where you, when you start to live in trust, when you are in this attitude that, you know, make anything of my life, God, life, universe, just make anything of me. Let my life flow in whichever direction it must then you can be free. When you start to acknowledge the illusion of doership, when you start to really acknowledge that your own doing is not separate from life's doing, then you can be free from guilt, fear, doubt, 
anticipation, anxiety. You, you said, I have heard you say surrender to life, that life takes care of life. And I also used to hear and believe in a saying that goes, whatever happens is for the best. When we see certain events taking place that the mind labels as unfortunate, painful, and unfair or sad, how do we explain life taking care of life or the effectiveness of surrender in such cases? So as I just earlier said, like, right, like this, this trust that you have in the unfoldment, this trust that you have in life correcting itself. I mean, like uh, just everything that's happening, everything that's arising, just ha having like there's just an intelligence that's sort of taking care of all the movement. Then you have actually no need to even explain to yourself why this thing that apparently is very, very bad is not so bad. Here, acknowledge the mind's very limited scope. The, the judgment that arises that says, no, this is a really bad thing that happened is very limited to that point of space and time, you know? You in your own life have experienced many things that appear to be really bad when they happened, but maybe five years down the road or even a couple of months down the road, you look back and you were like, thank God that happened because if it hadn't, this thing wouldn't have happened or that thing wouldn't have happened. So the mind is like a, 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 an immature child that just looks at what is currently happening and then just passes a judgment. And based off of this judgment, we suffer. Because we believe in it, we suffer. Whereas the path of trust, path of surrender, path of wisdom is not believing in the judgment, not judging altogether, allowing things, the time to unfold. And everything reveals its own self over time. Some things appear to be good right when they, they are happening, but then they, they, they reveal their other side too. Whereas some things appear to be negative in nature, and then they, they totally turn. So don't prematurely react. Again and again, observe in your experience that the things you used to call bad or you wish didn't happen, and then you started to look at them as a fortunate happening. During that time, you didn't have, uh, because you were looking at it in such a limited way, you were only looking at it perhaps in a way that what is this event taking away from me? What am I losing? But then over time, because of that loss, also there was a great, you know, something else came into your life that was amazingly and uh, amazing and beautiful, but you couldn't have seen it from that particular time. So mind is limited to time. It is limited. It has a very limited scope and it sees only through judgment, you know? So have that discernment. Now, next time something you would say bad happens and the mind starts judging, again, be at ease. Don't believe in such judgments. Take your attention away. Let them go. When you, when you don't believe in the mind's judgments, when you stop feeding attention to such thoughts, you're by its very, uh, by that very act, you're living in trust. You're living in surrender. You're living in flow. I give the example all the time that, it, um, when I was going through my spine injury for many years, it was the, the greatest period of suffering in my life. Still, sometimes when I, when I, if I think about it, it's like, it was a very, very painful period, you know, but again, Everything that is good about my life, even circumstantially now comes from, comes because I had to go through that period. So of course, during that period, it was a difficult period. It was full of suffering. Everybody involved would say that is a bad period and it shouldn't happen to a person at that age. But again, now you look back from here and it's like, that is the greatest thing that could have happened. So there are many instances like this in your life, in everybody's life. We just have to know that the mind is always prematurely reacting. 
And if you continue to believe in these premature judgments, then you really ride the roller coaster of ups and downs, you know? Then when we believe, when there's a great belief in these judgments, we are bound to suffer those judgments. Then that experience even becomes more full of <laughs> suffering. So by not feeding that, those judgments and those interpretations of that experience with your attention, with your interest, you are by that very act living in trust. And soon the unfoldment of your experience will itself reveal to you how that may have been of benefit or what it turned into, why that needed to happen, you know? And then more so it allows you to be at ease even when the difficult time is happening. It allows you to go through that difficult period with integrity. Especially when a difficult period happens, you'll see that it really, try, like your lower nature, right? Uh, envy, greed, jealousy, selfishness, and all those, anger, fear. Your lower nature is like really provoked. And so if you believe in all those things and you are just totally immersed and in, uh, immersed in the experience, not only are you suffering it, but also you're becoming more entangled in those mental impressions of anger, hate, blah, 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 you know, all those things, what I call the lower nature. So when you in this way start to trust, trust in life itself, rather than your own little mental intelligence, rather than what people are telling you, then you start to disentangle yourself from the, the claws of your lower nature. And your lower nature itself becomes weaker. We have this idea that in order to trust, I must first fight and win against my fears. I must first master my fear so then I could live in trust. But it's the other way around. You have to, despite your fear, live in trust. And only then will fear lose its grasp over you. Same thing goes with this teaching. You know, we discuss many subtle things and everything. And you may be under the hypnosis that I must first figure this out mentally. And then I can really see this in practice. I must first, this doubt that my mind is uh, bringing up, I must first uh, solve this. Or this question, I must first get answered, and then I will have that understanding. But this itself is backwards. Same thing when we, uh, we're, we're practicing meditation or self-inquiry, when you're asked to, rather than pursue this constant trail of thinking, trying to grasp the truth in words, when you're asked to take your attention away from it, right? And you're asked to simply bring the attention to yourself when you're asked to contemplate awareness silently rather than thinking about the teaching or thinking about my true self, that is an act of trust. You're, you're turning away from your little mental intelligence, you as a person trying to live and figure things out, to you're just, it's, a, it's an act of surrender, surrender to the unknown. Everything, like thoughts are the known. Thoughts and what they say and the world they paint, that is the known. It is simply just a, a recycling of concepts that, that are already part of the conditioning. Taking your attention away from that is the act of trust. Bringing... Bring, uh, Collapsing the attention into being. That, that is living in the unknown. And here itself, you, you start to see that. Th this is when that intelligence that I was speaking of, that is sort of taking care of all of this, that starts to become known. That's, you start to become receptive to that, aware of that. Because when you're too just immersed in your thinking and grasping and doubting and fearing, 
that subtler intelligence is totally beyond your frequency. Your, 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 the frequency is too dense. It cannot pick up on those subtler things. So in meditation, we, we, we take the attention away. And as these fears and these doubts themselves fall away because they can't withstand you taking their, your, your attention away, they only perpetuate themselves because you're a constant interest. So when you just start living the unknown, right? In, in meditation, you're simply being the unknown. They start to become weaker. And then in your day-to-day -day life, when you're you know, moving about and going through these challenges, when you choose ease rather than fear, when you choose trust rather than judging and interpreting, again, right? The frequency is becoming subtler and subtler you'll become more intuitively intelligent. That is an intelligence that surpasses thinking. Do you ever feel that uh, maybe you even had like a glimpse of this where you just feel the, like the right thing to do? We call it intuition, right? We just feel like, okay, no, this is, I know this is what I want to do. This is the, the right path. This is so that's the subtler intelligence I'm speaking of. It is, it is totally beyond the mind's grasp. And it only comes by surrendering to the unknown. In meditation, that looks like what, our, what we define as the practice. Either the object-focused meditation, it's the same thing. You know? You're taking attention away from the thoughts, bringing it to the sensation of the body or the breath. Or in self-inquiry, you're just returning to yourself. It is an act of surrender. You're surrendering your mental intelligence for intelligence, life. And then in life, you, you live through the practice of acceptance. You observe, but don't prematurely judge. You learn to let things be as they are. You act from acceptance. You choose your higher nature over your lower nature. You trust. That is the way to disentangle yourself. That is the way to subtleify your frequency. It's all just sort of happening. There is no doer. The seeming doer, the seeming chooser, is also just a part of the happening. You are not the doer. You are not the controller. You are not the chooser. The doer itself is perceived by you. To make this clear to yourself, at the end of the day, just take a look at the day, how it sort of just happened. Of course, throughout the day when you were doing the particular activities one by one, it seemed that like, you know, you are doing everything. You are thinking, you are choosing, you are feeling, you are acting, but just at the end of the day, take a look back and just see that like, it was sort of, everything was just happening automatically, almost like on autopilot. And another way to see this clearly is by observing your entire experience and seeing, seeing clearly that the doer and the chooser is part of the phenomena perceived. It is not the subject of experience. You're not just witnessing the changeful circumstances, the changeful world, as a body, as a chooser, as the mind. The mind, the body, its activities, its movements are also part of the phenomena appearing and disappearing, being perceived to change by that which has no notion of activity, which has no notion of movement, which has no quality, which has no name. And, and what we are referring to right now is not something apart from you. It is more you than what you appear to be. So see that all of experience, including the doing and the happening, it's all just a spontaneous occurrence. 
the more you can observe experience in this way, the more these shackles of doership start to become weaker. The more you start becoming free from pride, fear, guilt, anxiety, a sense of burden of doership, of being responsible for my life. If this video is helping you so far and you think that other people would also be able to benefit by it, please hit the like button below this video. It allows YouTube to spread this teaching to more people. I would really appreciate it. I still feel that I am a doer, that same old question which I asked, that if I decide to dance now and not clap, so it is my own decision that I'm dancing and not clapping. But where is the impulse that, for making that decision coming from? I can't answer this, please. So there, there's your sense of wonderment. You don't even know what you're going to decide to do next. Sure, you say, I decide to dance, but you may decide to go sit. Where is that impulse? that thought, that want coming from? So this is what I want you to contemplate. Don't oh, just yes. try to uh, don't just expect to understand this. It will require your looking and you have to see again and again that the, the stream of thought that's appearing in your awareness, you have no idea what your next thought will be. If you're not choosing your thought, what are you doing? What are you, what are you really in charge of? How much of it all are you controlling if you yourself are not controlling your thinking? That which orchestrates all your actions, right? Your thinking. If you don't even know what you're gonna think next, what are you controlling? This is to be contemplated. This, is, uh, this leaves you in a sense of you know, wonder that, wow. And it's not to say, now don't now live life like you have no control. No, of course, it's not, that's not the point. You do your best. You do your best in everything you need to do. But you again, you take that movement to be the movement of life, of God. Call it whatever you want. It is the unfolding of universe. You know, only by observing this and living in this way does the understanding, the wisdom about I am not the doer start to be dawned. You can't say, okay, once I understand it, then I will practice it. That's a very mindy thing. You know, that's funny how mind always just like expects the result and then it will do it. But it's like that understanding only dawns when you start to observe your experience as it is. So in this case, I just asked you to acknowledge, you know, the very next thought, you have no idea what it will be. Knowing this, yeah, still do your best, live your best life, do what you wish, do what you enjoy. And you, you take all of that movement, wherever this life is unfolding, you take that to be life moving. And then there, where's the sense of worry? Where's there a need for worry? If all is life's unfolding, if all is the spontaneous movement of life, then what's the need of worry? Because everything is moving as it should. And so only by really practicing that principle, observing it in your day-to-day -day life and living it, becoming the living embodiment of this teaching, this understanding will dawn on you more and more. Is that making sense? Thank you. Thank you so much. If you rewind the clock back a few years, I was totally closed off. I was so bought into just the conditioned worldview of how things are. I was chasing desires I was conditioned to want. I was living life in the way that, you know, just believing I'm just this person, that was the extent of my reality. I considered myself an atheist. I was deeply arrogant and prideful. So what instilled this deep trust in life 
for me was that even when I was lost, so lost during those years, still there was an intelligence at play that somehow orchestrated these life events in a way that brought me clarity, that put me on the right track. I can tell you that what life looks like right now, who I am today, you could have never guessed. I could have never guessed my family, my friends, anybody who really knew me from back in the day could never tell you that this is how my life would unfold, that I would be talking these things, that this is what I would be doing in life. But that's the beautiful part about it. Life is deeply unpredictable. Unpredictability, unknown, is actually the only certainty. So there is a, another intelligence at play. And right now, this intelligence feels like something apart from me. As we go down this path of surrender and self-inquiry, we actually discover that that intelligence is myself. And what I currently take myself to be, at, and the me that I'm referring to in the story, that's actually just me in appearance, not in reality, not in truth. So as this story then unfolds, and sometimes life isn't how you want it to look like, things aren't going your way, these concerns and these resistances and these perceptions of why me, why is this happening, this shouldn't be as it, all of these things will lose their meaning. I can tell you that none of these things are ever believed in anymore. Because you see that, of course, right now may, it may appear to be this way, and it's not necessarily favorable, it's not something that I want, but it is as it should be. Whatever is, is as it should be. And there is a, a, a subtler intelligence at play. When you start to trust life in this way, that is when you begin to flow with life rather than always fighting against it. You begin to shed away these shackles of personal identity and you start to acknowledge your true nature as that subtler intelligence of which this is simply a play. So going through all those really difficult experiences in my past and being so lost in my ideologies and my belief systems and still life coming to my rescue and sort of putting me on the right track even when I was so closed off, that instilled within me such a deep trust that I don't need to worry about anything, you know? I, of course, from my personal perspective, will always do my best, um, will always act accordingly as I think I should in a way that I observe will create harmony for myself and others. But other than that, there never needs to be any resistance towards any experience because all is as it should be. That is a life lived in surrender. That is a life lived in trust. But this is something for you to see and experience rather than just think about and fantasize about. Yet in experience, you continue to resist. You continue to believe in your resistances. That doesn't work. I really hope this video helped you. Uh, please check out all my free resources down below in the description box. And if you want to work with me in my program, uh, the details are also in the description box. So please take a look at that and you can apply if it resonates with you. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.